Zambia, One Nation, a warm welcome to ZNBC TV2 Main News. Top stories in the news this evening. Three people have died on the spot while two others are nursing serious injuries at Mwinilunga District Hospital after the earth collapsed on them during an illegal mining activity. Also in the news, 18 grass thatched houses belonging to 18 households have been gutted by fire at Lukundu village in Tapo area of Mongo district, most province. And in foreign news, mourning is underway in Tanzania for the 64 people who died when a fuel tanker exploded on Saturday. With the news in detail, my name is Chiwanzana Chalwe. Three people have died on the spot while two others are nursing serious injuries at Mwinilunga District Hospital after the earth collapsed on them during an illegal mining activity. The accident happened in the early hours of yesterday at Kasemuka Stream in Kanyeshi area of Chief Chiwika's chiefdom. The deceased have been identified as Grinio Sanyindimu, aged 38, Charles Chitungu, 34, and Mothias Seanyindimu, 32. The illegal miners were digging soil suspected to be containing gold powder when the upper heap of soil fell on them. Acting Mwenilunga District Commissioner Muya Tulani, who confirmed the incident in an interview with Zanis in Mwenilunga after visiting the accident scene, described the incident as a tragedy. And one of the survivors, Royd Kayumba, said that he had gone to Kasemuka Stream with his friends to find a fortune after word went round that there were gold deposits there. Illegal mining activities have continued to increase in Winlonga district following the recent discovery of gold deposits in the area. Now, 18 grass-thatched houses belonging to 18 households have been gutted by fire at Likundu village in Tapo area of Mongo district in western province. The houses were gutted following a fire which was left burning in one of the households after preparation of food. The inferno destroyed property worth thousands of kwacha, which included 1,200 kwacha hard cash, blankets, clothes, millimil, dried fish, cell phones, kitchen utensils, among others. This came to light when Likindu village chairperson Ngola Kamota reported the matter to the Mongu District Administration and the Office of the Vice President through the Mongu District Disaster Management Committee has supplied 36 by 12.5 kilogram bags of millimil to the affected households. Mongu District Administrative Officer Ernest Mwanangombe, who was accompanied by District Community Development Officer Silumesi Sitali, delivered the millimil on behalf of government. In one of the affected villagers, Liala Kaveto, has thanked government for quickly coming to their aid. Now, a shopkeeper of Rwandese origin in, is living in fear after an encounter with two armed robbers clad partially in military regalia in Lusaka's Makeni Villa. This happened shortly before Mungisa Milazi, 33, was about to close his shop at around 21 hours last Friday. Mr. Milanzi says the masked robbers threatened to kill him before walking away with some goods from the shop and his cell phone. And residents of the area have attributed the insecurity in the area to lack of a police post. Penopsikazwe has the details in this report. The state of insecurity in Makeni's villa area is known by many who live here. But no one knows just exactly when they change from the status of concerned citizen to latest victim. Such was the case for this man, as his first encounter with robbers left an unnerving impression. He is still shaken and camera shy. <laughs> Nababoti, 
later drama tunes. Then I had a long plastic, and then I had a long plastic and drama. And my top time, I had a long time. Residents of the area say this is not the first of its kind, as many shops and homes have been broken into. They fear the insecurity in the area will continue if a police post is not set up here. Nineteen hours could be kuyenda, ba me nyakuno. Ero could be police, could be chidi chons at least, but mangi na koka police. Changa yako bune. Uyo pango wachuka kunchito, uyo pakufika usiku panyo mba tingina ngunga na mapeza waza nchi tatake. So tipe mpaba boma, but mangi na koka police to post. The reported robbery has since been reported to police. Pendop Sikazwe, ZNBC News, Lusaka. You're watching the main news on ZNBC TV2 just now. We take a break, but still to come in the news, a resident of Lusaka's Kamala South area has decided to start backyard gardening under Zesco Pylons. This plus other stories. Keep watching. Welcome back to TV2 News. A resident of Lusaka's Kamala South area has decided to practice backyard gardening under the Zesco Pylons. Kornas Msonda has, however, justified his action, saying he is being creative by utilizing the open space, which used to be a dumping site. But when contacted for a comment, Zesco National Spokesperson Henry Kapata said the utility company does not allow any sort of business or activity under its infrastructure. Here's a report. We found them planting vegetables on the remaining already tilled land. On the other side is a vegetable nursery and a garden with veggies almost ready for consumption. All these activities are happening under the Zesco Pylons. And the owner of this garden does not see any reason why this must be discouraged by anyone. I keep Lusaka green and green. And from that initiative or pronunciation, then I did take it as an initiative. I started now cleaning from this place. It was a dumping site. Mr. Msonda also has an appeal to Zesco on the safety of his workers. We find that the, uh, the measures whereby to which they can safeguard this place where maybe if the agent of uh, the cable damage the, so that I can, can the place can be safe for my workers who will be working here. But what are the views of residents around this area? Meanwhile, Zesco National Spokesperson Henry Kapata says all activities under the Zesco pylons are not allowed. We don't allow people to do any kind of business under the pylons. Ephraim Chiluwa, ZNBC News, Lusaka. The Disaster Management and Mitigation Unit, DMMU, has pledged to provide tents to Nkuta Primary School in Petauke District, where some pupils are learning from outside. This is after some of the classrooms had their roofs blown off by rains four years ago. School head teacher Miriam Banda has told Minister in the Office of the Vice President, Oli Papiri, that this situation has led to a reduction in the number of pupils attending classes. Riando Hamwala reports. For the past four years, pupils of Kunta Primary School in Petaoke District have been learning in these dilapidated classrooms. The roof of this school was blown off during the 2016 rain season and the 445 pupils from grade 1 to 7 have been sharing two classrooms. School head teacher Miriam Banda explains the challenges. So from that time, we have been using this classroom for one than two. So the learners, they don't learn at 23, they only learn for two hours. Each class learns for two hours only. So they don't receive the education that is required. Minister in the office of the Vice President, Oli Papiri, has visited the school. She says the Disaster Management and Mitigation Unit will provide a classroom tent which the school can use as the classrooms are being worked on. They have a shift of two hours and the children are not learning two hours. And where you see those uh, benches uh, under the tree there, that is another classroom. So after seeing that, as DMMU we have those school tents. So we are going to give them one tent which has a capacity of 45 desks. 
so that at least they can push on. The minister has also pledged to engage the Ministry of General Education on plans to upgrade this school once renovations are done. On that one, that is a long term measure. I will talk to my counterpart, the Minister of General Education, so that we can see how we can help this community of the future. Well, still to come after this set of commercials, TV2 relaunches My Community Program. This plus other stories. Keep watching. Welcome back to the news. The United Church of Zambia St. Mark's Congregation in Chilenje has held an induction service for Reverend Teresa Matimba in Lusaka. Reverend Matimba has pledged to do the work of God with support of members of St. Mark's Congregation. Here's a report. They have come in numbers to witness the induction of Reverend Teresa Matimba at the United Church of Zambia St. Mark's Congregation in Chilenje. These are members of the United Church of Zambia from different congregations. They have welcomed the newly inducted minister. I'm very, very excited because she's been already been welcomed in this church. And uh, she's one person who has really impressed me. I'm a member of the Morning Watch. Oh, it's been so awesome. You see, this reverend is uh, very much welcomed at this congregation in the Chilenjo Consistory. As you can see, there are so many people who have gathered. That shows that she's been very much welcome. <laughs> Meanwhile, the newly inducted minister, Reverend Teresa Matimba, has pledged to do her work with the support of the Almighty God. May I state from the onset that my call to full-time ministry in the United States of Zambia is anchored on the gospel according to Matthew chapter 28, verse 16 to 20 which states in part and I quote, Go ye therefore into the world and make disciples of all nations. This scripture has convinced and convicted me beyond any reasonable doubt that God has a special mission for me and only me because those that God calls, he prepares and equips them for the harvest. Charlotte Sijunda, ZBC News, Ministry of Local Government Permanent Secretary Amos Malupenga has challenged the Lusaka City Council to be proactive and not reactive. The Permanent Secretary noted that more often council has been seen on TV reacting on matters which could have been avoided if the local authority was on top of things. Mr. Malupenga added that civic leaders have a huge role to play in ensuring order and sanity in communities because they are closest to the people. He was speaking during TV2's relaunch of my community program and ZNBC board chairperson Mlenga Kapwepwe commended ZNBC TV2 for its authenticity in its news coverage. Ms. Kapwepwe said she is happy with the direction TV2 has taken to broadcast a diverse programming that has a direct bearing on the community. Meanwhile, ZNBC director of sales and marketing Evans Muhanga has called on the business community to take advantage of the national broadcaster's diverse audience on all its channels to advertise goods and services. My community program is aired every Saturday at 10 hours. You're watching the main news on ZNBC TV 2. Coming up after this break, we have foreign and sports news. Keep watching. Welcome back to the news. Now, in foreign news, mourning is underway in Tanzania for the 64 people who died when a fuel tanker exploded on Saturday. Pictures posted online show flaming wreckage scattered over a wide area, charred bodies lying on the ground. People are trying to recover, people were trying to recover from fuel from the vehicle which had overturned on a major road when it exploded. The incident occurred in Marogoro region, about 200 kilometers west of the port city of Dar es Salaam the country's commercial capital. The city of Morogoro is a major route for transporting cargo and fuel from the port. Now, in sports news, 
South Africa's women national football team has beaten Zambia 1-0 to claim their sixth Kosafa Cup trophy. And Tanzania are the champions of the inaugural Kosafa Under-20 Women's Championship after beating Zambia two goals to one in the final in Port Elizabeth, South Africa today. In the senior category, Martha Mahebula scored the only goal of the match in the 22nd minute of for Banyana Banyana to claim the third Kosafa title in the row. Banyana Banyana coach Desiree Elise said the team worked collectively to win the tournament and Shipolo Polo coach Beauty Mamba says a lot of lessons have been picked from the tournament. Earlier in the day, Port Protisha Mduda scored the winner for Tanzania two minutes before stoppage time to be crowned to be crowned champions of the inaugural Kosafa Under-20 Women's Championship. Opa Sanga had put Tanzania in the lead after 23 minutes before Loveness Malunga leveled matters in the 56th minute. Tanzania coach Bakari Shime is happy that his team has won the tournament despite having invited to take part as guest participants in the competition and his Zambian counterpart Charles Halubono is impressed with the girls display despite the loss which was also the first of the tournament. Now to end the news we take a look at the headlines once again. Three people have died on the spot while two others are nursing serious injuries at Munilunga District Hospital after the earth after the earth collapsed in them during an illegal mining activity. The accident happened in the early hours of yesterday at Kasemika Stream in Kanyeheji area of Chief Chukuka Chieftain. 18 grass thatch houses belonging to 18 households have been gutted by fire at Likundu village in Tapo area of Mongo district in western province. The houses were gutted following a fire which was left burning in one of the households after preparation. And in foreign news, mourning is underway in Tanzania for the 64 people who died when a fuel tanker exploded on Saturday. Pictures posted online show flaming wreckage scattered over a wild area and charred bodies lying on the ground. And this is where we come to the end of our news. My name is Chuanza Machawe. On behalf of the entire studio and newsroom crew, thank you so much for watching. And remember, we are one Zambia, one Shepherd.